Hey everybody, welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm gonna be going through three adventure anthologies or collections of short adventures uh, for old school essentials. So these are OSE games, but you could really use them in any OSR game. I mean, they are really simple to, to change. I've even used a couple of these in 5e. So they're really simple, straightforward to convert, but they're really good adventures. Almost all of them are things that I have either run or want to run. There aren't any misses here. Um, they're not all home runs, but they're not all, but you know, there's at least a double or a triple in there. <laughs> uh, they're at least a double or a triple. So um, I'll just click through them and show them quickly what's in each of them. Now, some of these are available already to buy, at least in PDF. Uh, some of them, at least one of them, isn't complete yet. So this is sort of the pre-release version. Yeah, it's not yet done, not all the art is in there. Um, but the, other, uh, the others all have stuff in them. Now, the first one that I'm going through, Adventure Anthology 1, is complete. In, in at least PDF form. I don't yet have the physical copies. Um, so I kickstarted this a while back and uh, these were some of the rewards. They're gonna be coming out, of course, to buy separately if it, they're not out already. I'll put links below if, uh, if more, for more information or where you can get them. But let's go through it. So first, Adventure Anthology has four adventures. There's the Jeweler's Sanctum, and this is just the opening front pages. You have maps really quickly at the front of each of these books. So great design, you can easily flip to where you are. So the Jeweler's Sanctum, Curse of the Maggot God, the Sunbathers, and the Comet that Time Forgot. Those are your four adventures that you're looking at in here. Three dungeon crawls, and, and one of them is a bit of a region with the major dungeon in it. And then the fourth one, the Comet that Time Forgot, is a, is a hex crawl. A small hex crawl, but there's a lot of adventure in there and a lot of extra stuff that, that uh, could, could lend itself to a much bigger adventure or maybe even small campaign. So uh, the art in this book is fantastic. Um, really, really great. You have Jacob Fleming and uh, just other great artists. I, I like Jacob Fleming a lot, but you have great uh, other artists in here. Mark Lyons and Chris Malik and just uh, Stephen Poet. Lots of great artists here. Um, so the adventures in here are roughly level one through three, but then the comment that time forgot is a level nine plus. So it's a very high level. You would only run it for, you know, very high level characters. Um, the Jeweler's Sanctum is awesome. I've run this for 5e um, with some ad adaptation, of course, but it's a really cool little adventure. It's not gonna take you too long, but there's fun stuff in here. There are puzzles uh, that relate to checkerboard patterns. Um, there are giant rats, as you might expect. <laughs> um, there are giant centipedes and oozes, uh, but the, the layout is what I really like here. Now, there aren't maps on every page, which I think would have been great, but the dungeons are pretty small and you can flip back pretty quickly to the map on page five here, so it's not bad. And you have it on the front cover too, so it's not too bad, but it would be nice to have had uh, maps on every page. I would say this is one of the ones that's not necessarily a home run adventure, but it's really good. It's really good, solid adventure that you can throw into almost any campaign, and it's gonna have uh, a little bit of interest, a little bit of uh, ma some magic items in here. There's some fun puzzles, lots of cool encounters. It's not the best adventure I've ever read, but it's a good one, totally solid. And the art in this book is fantastic. That's a Jacob Fleming piece, I believe. Curse of the Maggot God is much better in my view just because it's uh, more interesting, it's grosser, it's got kind of cool stuff going on in the sewers, and you can put this in any kind of city campaign. It would be below a city, right? But you could you could put it into any kind of city campaign, and that would be really fun. Uh, essentially, there are workers who have gone missing, and you're trying to, uh, to find them. Uh, you have this maggot god, this creepy giant maggot that is being uh, served by troglodyte cultists, and you find uh, lots of old... Um, Lots of old traps and tricks in this uh, old forgotten basement of a, of a <laughs> larger manor that used to be above it, but you're, you're down in the basement of it, which is attached to the sewers. And there's uh, just some interesting creatures and some, uh, there's a Black Widow monster here, which is real rough. Uh, its poison is just death, say versus poison or death in a turn. Um, but you've got troglodytes, which are kind of fun creatures to fight. And that's it. Again, a really short adventure. I would say this one's not, again, a home run, but it's a really solid adventure. And it would be fun to run. I haven't run this one. I haven't run this one, I have to admit. But it's a cool, solid adventure. Again, you could throw it into any kind of city crawling campaign or run it as a one shot. It'd be pretty great. You have the Sunbathers, which is, I think, the best of this first book. Well, this one and the last one are both home runs. I love this one, the Sunbathers. So you get an island, Fos Imeras. Fos Imeras? I'm not sure how to say it. 
But you have an island with some locations. There's a ruin. There's uh, an olive grove. There's the North Beach. And those, inf those, those places are kind of vaguely referenced, not detailed. So if you wanted to develop this into a bit more of, an, uh, of a larger adventure, you easily could. Um, there are some references to what might be there and how you, how you come across the island. You could, you know, shipwreck, or you could be hired to find a particular person, um, or you could be, you know, just just looking for something that he has, that, uh, uh, an old hero who came here has lost, uh, essentially sort of an, an Odysseus-type figure. Because this is definitely, it gives me a Greek vibe, like an ancient Greece vibe. And you could throw this into any kind of island-hopping campaign, too, where this is just one of the islands in the region. So essentially what you have here is this, is this temple where there are... Uh, a sort of a quasi-religious order that's healing people, healing the sick, healing all these, um, these uh, you know, uh, pilgrims, you might say, people who have gotten here, and yet the healing is less, less cure and more, um, well, the, 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 it's the cult of Leith. That should tell you something, or Letha? Leith? Lethe? I think it's Leith, um, which, of course, is the, the pool of forget, the river of forgetfulness. Uh, so you kind of get a sense of what might be going on here. But there's some great rumors and uh, the golden Asclepian, Asclepion, I suppose. <laughs> um, which is where you're going and you have this really creepy place where, of course, there is the, the front rooms, which are available to anyone to go into. But then there's the back rooms, which you're not supposed to go into and bad stuff's happening back there. And there's some really creepy stuff going on back there. Uh, as you can tell from the purified one little piece of art there. <laughs> uh, Real gross. And what I also like about this is that there are multiple ways into the dungeon. Always a good thing to have. Um, just a great adventure. Oh, yeah, perfection's final form. Really creepy. Like something out of uh, Castlevania. I think there's a creature like that in Castlevania. An orb of, of bodies. So that's a great adventure. Creepy. It has this um, very, very disturbing feeling to it. Uh, undermining a little bit. Which is great for a, a creepier campaign. Um, perfect old school vibe. And then you've got the comment that time forgot, which is, it's just like you're something out of a sword and sorcery or sword and sandal, you know, uh, over the top pulp adventure magazine or something like that. You step through a portal and you find yourself in, on a comet or on a, a bit of land in the comet and one side of it's burning up because that's where it's, it's hurling through space and the back of it's frozen because it's, you know, in space. And so you have this terrain of frozen, hot, and then temperate in the middle with a little bit of ocean there. It's just, it's really over-the-top pulp old school. There are mammoths and cavemen and dinosaurs, giants, and um, there's, of course, dragons. Uh, you know, you're fighting white apes, or you can help them. There are lizard folk in lagoons. There's a giant sea turtle. There's salamanders, red dragons, ice dragons, fire giants. Um, really excellent, right? It's like something out of Fire and Ice, that old uh, cartoon, where, you know, you're, you start off with the ice people, or I guess it's reversed from that, because you start off with the ice people and you have to rescue the, the ice princess, basically, who's been taken by the fire giant sort of thing. Um, it's kind of the idea. But of course, this is more of like a hex crawl, and there's a lot of little adventures throughout this place. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that there are a handful of little pieces of art, and there's like one map, but there are actually a lot of locations. And some of them would be a bit more dungeony, and so you kind of have to develop your own, which is you know great for some people. I like that. Some people wouldn't like that. They'd rather have all of it prepared for them. So this one will take a bit more work to make into a campaign because there are quests here, and they direct you to different parts of the of the comet. But it's a great, uh, I mean, super good. I could see this being plopped into almost any adventure high level, or you could run this as a high level one shot, and that would be kind of fun. You have a group of people stumble through a portal, like you start off with them running out of a dungeon that they've just delved, and there's something collapsing, and they see a, a glowing portal, and they leap through to save themselves, and they find themselves on this comet, and that's how they begin. Right? That'd be a cool way to start a campaign or something like that. So anyway, this is the first of these anthologies. Four great adventures. All four, I think, are solid and, and worth playing, but especially those last two, the Sunbathers and the Comet the Time Forgot. Really excellent old school adventures. The second is another adventure anthology. It's an official uh, adventure anthology from Old School Essentials, OSE. Um, this one is really good as well. There's some great adventures in here. This one's in progress. It's not finished yet, um, but a lot of it is done. Has four adventures just like the other The Barrow of the Bone Blackguards, The Cathedral of the Crimson Death, The Shrine of the Oozing Serpent, and The Ravener's Got. I think it's how you say it, Got. 
Um, so they're first two are levels one through th low level adventure level one through three and then the cathedral crimson death is a little bit harder and then the ravener's god is six, level six through eight so these are if you bought both of these books together these two anthologies together you'd have adventures level one through nine basically all of them added up together but they again don't have a really connecting theme um there's a breakdown of each of the adventures and what they're like in the introduction and then you get the barrow of the bone blackguards which is a low level adventure excellent little ed dungeon uh, adventure. You're looking at these skeletons have come to life, and have, they used to be bandits since they started rob robbing the roads again, and they're interested in being brought back to life fully. They're, they're sick of being skeletons, and so they have this necromancer who's been caught, and all of this cool stuff going on, and there are fairies here who used to use this place as their den, and now they've been driven out, and so they're mad, and it's just a really cool... I mean, look at this art. Great skeletons fighting and drinking and partying and wanting to come back to full life and all of that. Mad pixies, um... Uh, creepy, burning shrines, captured merchants, giant spider, because of course there's a giant black widow spider, <laughs> an evil treant, um, and the the captured wizard. Great adventure. That's another home run. I think that's a great place to start a campaign. It'd be a really, really great low-level adventure to run. The Shrine of the Oozing Serpent is also really good. This is the one that's been, I think, most recently added to the, the collection. Um, a really cool adventure, a really cool idea. There's this creepy, gloopy dragon that is uh, basically kind of uh, sending out these slimy, amorphous things. Um, I guess they're not amorphous, they're more um, amphibian. But they're starting to uh, ruin the surrounding region, and, uh, and it's just this greasy dragon. Um, it's awesome, a grease dragon, essentially pitch dragon and so you've got stuff like you know a creepy chapel there's an automaton um you've got uh gnome gnome how do i say that necromancy with a g um it's all it deals with dead gnomes necromancy <laughs> it's just funny uh, and again here you don't have art for this one yet so that's one of the things this one's not done yet um tribute and then of course soot soot Merc, who is the dragon you're dealing with that's the one that doesn't have art yet. Then you have the Cathedral of Crimson Death, which is by Diego Noguera. Um, and this one's a really, really good, creepy adventure about this cursed religious order that has been now you know, possessed, basically taken over by, um, by an, evil, uh, an evil demon who is pretending to be a bishop. And so all of the, uh, the paladins have become corrupt and the place is evil now. And Great art, very evocative. Obviously, it's evil, right? I mean, you look at the, the gate and you're like, oh, that's an evil place. Um, so it's hard to, hard to maybe believe that some of these people think they're good still, but some of them do. Um, you've got creepy bells that ring in creepy ways and you've got great art throughout uh, the Crimson Bishop, who's a very hard fight. A gross grave spider. There's a cool villain, though. Um, and a pit of ashes. Um, the Deathless Abode, and the Crimson Bishop himself. Great piece of art there for the Crim Crimson Bishop. Another good adventure. Uh, I would I highly recommend that one as well. Um, fun. It wouldn't be... Uh, again, I haven't played any of these four. I should make that clear. This is the one I haven't really touched very much. But they all seem really cool. There are some cool... Um, I would say interesting twists to this one. NPCs you can interact with, perhaps turn people against their former leaders and things like that. But for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward dungeon crawl, just with a sort of, you know, religious demonic um, battle going on. Um, and then there's the Ravener's Gat, or Ravener's Gat, which is sort of more, um, I think, East Indian or just Indian um, kind of influenced. Uh, you got this, uh, this sort of temple. Um, and a lot of the references are things like that. Uh, I'm not as familiar with that sort of mythology or, or folklore, so this one's a bit outside my area. But it seems really cool, um, and uh, what's going on there is is, is really cool. <laughs> There's Rakshasas and uh, um, Pujaris and, and mummies and things like that. You're going to this old temple that has been cursed. Great art here as well. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see an adventure that isn't traditional Western fantasy sometimes thrown in there. Because there's, there's just a lot of other stuff out there, right? And it, so it, it changes the tone, it changes the, uh, the assumptions um, in a really interesting way that your players are probably not familiar with, at least most, most of my players wouldn't be familiar with it. So it would be very different. It would feel very different from what they're usually used to. But with the same sort of, you know, 
OSE tone. You're still going through a dungeon. You're still trying to get treasure. <laughs> you're still fighting giant bats and creatures like that. You're fighting falsehoods, which is really awesome. Uh, and there, again, there's great art in this one as well, um, which is very strange. And then you have the creature itself, the Ravener, a 10-foot tall obscenity of rotting flesh and patches of filthy blackened fur. Really cool. And then you have, that's the end of the back page, isn't even done yet. So this is, uh, again, another great adventure, or another great adventure anthology, I would say. Uh, both are totally, totally worthwhile. Now, I like this uh, cover because it reminds me of the classic picture of the adventuring party that's in front of the idol, um, tearing, you know, taking out the eyes of the, the statue with the dead lizard folk around. It's kind of like a take on that, so I like this cover a lot. And the last uh, anthology is Wyvern Songs, or Wyvern Songs, Wyvern Songs, which is not an official... Uh, anthology, but it's uh, sort of a collection by different designers. Brad Kerr is the one who put it all together. Um, fantastic piece of art on the cover, and these are another uh, another set of adventures that I have. I've run one of them, and the others are the other four are or the three I should say are things I have not run, but they are really all good, really good. And uh, these are almost all home runs, I would say. The one I'm less interested in, I, I will have to admit, is the Dreaming Caldera, which is the last of these. But you have the Sinister Secret of Peacock Point, which is the one I've run. You have Fabian's Atelier, Atelier, yeah. You have the Singing Stones, which is a regional, well, I'll talk more about it, and then the Dreaming Call there. So four interesting adventures here. The Sinister Secret of Peacock Point. Look at that piece of art. That creature is terrifying. It's so good, and it comes back again and again. It's that kind of uh, villain. Now, when my creature, my, my, my parties, <laughs> I call them creatures, when my party ran into it, uh, they kind of took after it. They got lucky with it the first time because you fight it, and uh, they got really lucky and they managed to defeat it, but it doesn't really die. And so they were like kind of trying to chase it down um, and, and find it because they thought they could handle it. They didn't really think about the fact they got super lucky the first time they fought it. But the idea here is that there's this um, uh, lighthouse, which has kind of been abandoned for a long time. There's a, a, a thieves guild, which is operating out of it, and they've stolen this box, which had a cursed, well, a cursed box, which you're not supposed to open. And they opened it. And they all basically died. And so you're going down here probably because you're trying to find the box. Probably the wizard that they stole it from has hired you to find it. But it could be uh, anything else. Too. It's an introductory adventure. Four to six first level characters. So um, it's it's definitely a monster based. Or it's a villain based adventure. There's one creature that's that everything is kind of revolving around. And there are other creatures to fight and other things to run into. But it's, it's kind of all about the Skitter Lord, which is this gross mummy full of bugs who's chasing you around and uh, trying to destroy you. And there's really only one way to properly destroy him, or really not even destroy him, but there's really only one way to beat him. And so the players have to kind of try to find that if they're going to if they're gonna um, survive and get out with all the loot, because there's a lot of loot in here. Um, there are skunk goblins, there are bandits, there's an automaton, there's a bicycle, <laughs> there's, uh, there's some weird stuff going on in here. Um, but it's a great... It's got that tone that I often really like, which is funny, but also dark. Funny on the surface, and then you have a tone of darkness underneath, underneath it. Um, there's some cool puzzles you kind of have to figure out as you're going through. Um, and uh, there are links to other potential adventures here. You don't have to do just uh, this as a one-shot. Oh, you could. I did it as a one-shot. But you can connect it to other things in the world. Um, yeah, so there's a bicycle, and he has a note like, if you don't want a bicycle, you could add something else, such as a locked adamanti birdcage holding the guildmaster's pet infant red dragon, Huffy. You should really consider adding a bicycle to your game, though. <laughs> it's a great little note there. And then the follow-up, what happens if they choose what they choose uh, to do in the adventure. Then there's Fabian's Atelier, which is a puzzle dungeon. There's very little fighting here. Not that there's no fighting, but it's very little fighting. Um... It's a follow-up to Hideous Daylight, which if you guys know is another adventure. I don't actually have that one. Um, it never really clicked with me too much. But some people, I mean, I'm sure really love it. So this is a follow-up to that adventure. So this can continue right off of that, but it doesn't have to. You can, you can run it as a one-shot. So it's a note about puzzle dungeons, and this is really interesting. He's talking about how um, <laughs> violence is always an answer. So that's really, I like the point five there. It's really, it's really important. <laughs> if you want to, you can always just use time and senseless destruction and you can always get through a puzzle dungeon if the players cannot find other ways around it. Don't, don't shut them out of that. Uh, and, and just you know, go with it. There are no right answers. If the players have a weird workaround that makes sense, say yes. Puzzles are really hard in D&D, and I think we've all probably had that experience where we try to run a puzzle, and we have like our, our plan for the players to solve it, and they, they either think of something we didn't think of, or they can't think of what we wanted them to think of. 
And if we're not clever and we don't think on our feet, we could just get stuck there. The players get stuck, we get stuck, we want them to solve it, we think that they're close, but they don't know how to do it. It, it can be really frustrating. So um, make sure that you, I would say, read these notes, and they're really good notes about how to run a puzzle dungeon, especially, but any puzzle, well, you gotta keep the game moving. You can't get let things get stuck if you're gonna run a puzzle like this. So it's just a wizard's tower. Um, and one of the interesting things is that uh, he has a note on size because one of the things you can do is shrink down really small and you can fight things that are huge relative to you. Um, for example, you can go through the water pipes and find your ways through the walls and, and, and fight creatures that are much bigger than you that are normally like rats, <laughs> right? But uh, you can fight them and, and now they're huge and, and that sort of thing. Um, now the puzzles themselves are, are pretty hard. I'll admit, uh, not all of them. Some of them are, are a little easier, but this would be a tough dungeon, and I don't know if this would be work for every group. If your group doesn't like dungeons with puzzles in them, or you don't like running puzzles, then you're just not going to like this dungeon. But there's some there's some funny things going on here. Also, the tone is really specific. Like, it's it's not going to work for a lot of campaigns. Because there's a lot of weird stuff, like iron living statues and weird... Um, Two canets, or two canets. I don't know. It's a bird that uh, talks to you and gives you hints and stuff. And <laughs> gremlins and giant rats. It's just you know, a, a night dragon here. Um, if you don't like it, you know you're not going to like it. But it it it's really good and it has interesting ideas. I don't think I would ever run this dungeon. I mean, I might. I might. It's really cool and it's really clever. I don't think my players would ever like it. If I found the right players, I would run this. Um, once again, you have the follow up and what happens if you finish it up. Now, the Singing Stones is a wilderness adventure. I really like this one. Um, essentially, you're in a valley. It's a sandbox, and uh, it's, it's a point crawl. And so you're going from point to point, try to solve the different quests that you can find uh, throughout. So you have these points and the locations. There you go. And they're all really interesting. They're all things that will catch your eye. So you'll remember them. So the players can use this to their advantage um, and, uh, and uh, how to get there. So there are rivals, random encounters. And then there's a breakdown of each of the zones, the Humming Flats, the Sleeping Giant, the Camp, the Ranger Station, the Chiming Plateau, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are locations within those locations that you can find. Um, there's a retired Medusa. <laughs> there are uh, these cool stones that are singing. Uh, that's why it's called the Singing Stones. Obviously, they're blood demons. Um, barefoot dwarves who are doing their own thing <laughs> crystal caverns giant houses great a uh, grand cathedral out here an old ruined ship out in the middle of the desert um, no waterways are remotely visible so how to get here and then the hagfish so it's just a region and a bunch of npcs and a bunch of stuff happening there and uh your ability to as a dm connect them and and flesh them out and make it more interesting if you want to uh, but there are a lot of ideas and a lot of opportunities to make this a great, a great adventure. And I think it's a cool place to throw in and you could, you could run a cool adventure or, or campaign even out here for a while um, using this point, this point crawl mechanics and these various locations and the things there. Really fun. It could be really fun. I, I want to run this at some point or at least throw it into a world. Um, the last is the Dreaming Called There. This piece of art is excellent. But the art inside is less my favorite. But I really like this. Um... So the Dreaming Caldera is this weird chaos cult. And it's like a really, you're, you're kind of going towards this mountain, this caldera with, um, gosh, uh, you know, a, a chaos cult. And so there's all of this weird stuff that's going on. Uh, it's chaos and it, it really is absolutely chaotic. Bizarre things can happen. Heckling is an awful little bird person who hypnotizes everyone. Um, Gurk is a lizard man necromancer in a dirty plush robe. He's always damp. There's dire chickens. Um, it's just, you know, this is going to be, some people are going to find this to be their favorite thing ever. <laughs> and some people are going to absolutely hate this. Because it's so bizarre and it's so weird. And the stuff that can happen to the players are, is so weird. The art, again, like, it, it's pretty amateurish. It's not my favorite. I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of this. But the, the cartography throughout all of these books is great. The maps are good. There's the Chaos God, the Archangel of Chaos, and uh, expanding the dungeon if you want to make it bigger. Really crazy stuff going on here. And there's bonus materials, which is the Mektar, which is a, a, a class 
you can you can find you can require you can find essentially or you can yeah it's sort of like a a replacement character because in order to use the mektar you are putting a soul into a new body and it's uh you have to have a dead character so it's a way of doing that then there's adventurers guilds you can put into any of these worlds and a little village that you can uh, throw into really any world but it works as sort of a connecting point to all these different adventures and there is a, a duchy or a, um, a hex crawl with these different locations all on here as well as some others from um, hideous daylight and uh, and things like that so you can add um, uh, sea of trees the temple of a thousand swords um, just a hex crawl if you wanted to, to to connect to some of the other adventures by these uh, by these people all right. Well, hopefully these something in these four has caught your attention. These three, I should say. A Wyvern Songs, Adventure Anthology 2, or Adventure Anthology 1. I think they're all three great, and they're worth getting. Uh, if you can't get them now, you know, they'll be out eventually for purchase. But, but I think Wyvern Songs and Adventure Anthology 1 you can get right now. Um, so I'll put links below where you can get them. If you're interested in collecting anthologies, or if you like using more modular one-shots, uh, or you play a lot of one-shots, or you like more modular dungeons, then these are all great because you can drop them in anywhere. There's a couple regions in here, uh, material for longer campaigns if you wanted to do it, but these are all great, full of great ideas too. And so even if you just take bits and pieces from these adventures, I think you'll, uh, you'll be well served by them. So anyway, I hope this has been interesting, um, and I'll see you guys in another video.